okay guys in this video i will discuss about the drawback when you are using any white flange section or eye section as the column okay and also definitely i will discuss about the solution or how to overcome that drawback okay so before starting this video if you're new to this channel please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited okay before diving into the core concept let's just recap some basic concept okay so let's say you have some beam which is subjected to some bending moment and you have an eye section or white flange section as your beam member okay and when you are applying that bending moment about the major axis of the eye section how the stress distribution looks it looks something like this and here you can see that majority of the stresses either tensile force or the compressive stresses or resultant compressive force they are being carried by this flange of the eye section okay so indirectly you can say that whenever you are applying any bending moment about the major axis of any eye section that bending moment is actually being carried by the flange in the form of a tensile force and a compressive force clear very good okay now let's say you are applying some bending moment about this minor axis right this is the minor axis and let's say you are applying some bending moment okay so definitely due to this bending moment about the minor axis the stress distribution will look like this okay so here you can see that to carry this majority of the stresses there is no such flange or any type of material okay so you can say that if you apply bending moment about the minor axis of any i section in that case that bending moment cannot be carried by that section okay so further we will use this simple concept to understand today's topic or you can say the drawback of any i section column okay consider this frame this is a simple steel structure okay and here you can see that we have used the i section or white flange section as our column correct okay now consider the frontal or the transverse frame okay now under the action of lateral load what will happen definitely at the base of each of this column there will be some bending moment right so to carry this bending moment what you have to do you have to simply provide a fixed base okay so here the bending moment is being applied about the major axis of this column okay so now this bending moment is being converted into a compressive force and a tensile force okay so due to this tensile force this reactive downward force has been generated and to transfer this tensile and compressive force you take the help of this flange right and to transfer the forces from the flange to the foundation what you have to do you have to put the anchor bolt outside of the flange okay not inside you have to use them at the outside of the flanges only in that case the compressive force as well as the tensile force will be carried properly to the foundation from the column okay okay now you can ask me so what is the problem we have successfully applied the lateral load and due to this lateral load whatever bending moment was generated okay we have also transferred that bending moment to the foundation by using some fixed base connection great now consider another direction initially we had transverse frame now consider the longitudinal direction and in the long direction we have one two three four five total five column okay but for the sake of the discussion we would consider only two column okay so this is a pin joint in the long direction we cannot provide the moment connection and why to get the answer you can go to the description there i have provided what is shear connection and moment connection correct so 
now this is the pin connection and this is the pin connection let's say due to earthquake or wind load you have some lateral load okay so due to this lateral load to make this frame stable what you have to do you have to put fixed base here okay and only in that case the bending moment generated due to this lateral load will be catered properly right so we are assuming that we have provided the fixed base and that is the reason this bending moment has been generated okay now let's see how we can or transfer this bending moment to the foundation remember now the bending moment is being applied about the minor axis because we are considering this long direction okay so now the bending moment is being applied about this minor axis and due to this minor axis bending moment we will have some stress distribution like this this is the resultant compressive force this is the resultant tensile force but unfortunately we have no material here to carry this tensile force or compressive force okay so our assumption that this base is fixed is completely void okay we cannot have any fixed base why because the i section or the white flange column cannot carry any bending moment about this minor x okay so now this joint is pinned this is pinned and our base is also become a pinned joint now if you apply any lateral load it is unstable right it will form a mechanism and it will collapse so to make it stable what you have to do you have to transfer this lateral load from this point to any of the foundation directly without affecting any column and how is it possible yes very simple solution just put a brushing this is a pinned this is pinned this is pinned this is also pinned now if you apply any lateral load like this it will directly go to this foundation through this pressing and it will not disturb anymore to this column or to this column or to this frame okay that is the reason whenever you are using any white flange section or i section as your column member you can only provide moment connection in a single direction or in a transverse direction for other direction or for long direction you have to provide a bracing this is a must got it if you love this video you know what you have to do